Next, we have the Byzantine Empire. The Byzantine Empire is effectively an outgrowth of ancient Rome. In a lot of ways, historically, it is simply the Romans as a Christian empire moved to the east. The Western Empire had fallen apart, as we saw under in late antiquity in 476. But yet, in the east, things will continue. Justinian will conquer much of what had been ancient Rome, as we see here, by about 550. This is going to be a big problem because it actually overstretches the Byzantine Empire. Once you conquer a land, you also need an army to take care of it, and Justinian doesn't have those resources. So things will go on a long, very slow decline over the next thousand years for the Byzantine Empire. The Byzantines are around just as long as the Romans. Now, he will reassert power of the Roman Empire throughout an extensive, uh, through an extensive building program, both secular and religious. So he's creating a very pious Christian, almost an orthodox empire in many ways. He will establish Latin as the official language of the empire, but they're otherwise effectively culturally Greek more so than Roman. It's sort of a Christian Greek world. So they're taking on a lot of Greek ideas. The clothing will be more Greek than Christian. The culture will be more Greek than Christian, again, except as it relates to Christianity. We also see them creating mosaics in large numbers. Now, the Romans and the Greeks had done this before, but we're going to see a lot more of them from the Byzantine. And the technique that we're looking at is a very, very specific form of mosaic. So what they're doing is they're working with tiny pieces of glass, sometimes no larger than maybe a grain of rice, to create incredibly intricate mosaics. This is not the same as maybe you have done in the past where you took a piece of concrete and you pushed large one inch by one inch or half inch by half inch tiles into it. This is much more ornate. They're taking those glass pieces or stone pieces and they're breaking them to very specific form and then piecing them together as closely as possible to get this incredibly detailed final product that we don't see a lot of today or we don't really see anywhere today outside of churches and some public institutions. The advantage of mosaic is it lasts, well, pretty much forever until it falls off of the wall. The disadvantage is it takes an enormous amount of time, far more than a painting, and it takes a great deal of skill. So we have large craft, large workshops creating these pieces, oftentimes on site, although sometimes it would create pieces of them and then install those pieces onto the wall so that they're not doing the intricate work on site. But that's a whole different ball of wax.